recording is being recorded. Okay, let's go. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us for our virtual uh, these charter school board meeting. Um, I will call the meeting to order and welcome everyone um, this evening. I'll start by reading our ethics statement. Um, board members are reminded that it is our duty to avoid conflicts of interest and the appearance of conflicts of interest as we handle the work of this board. Does any member of the board uh, know of any conflict of interest or any appearance of conflict with respect to matters coming before us at this meeting? If so, please station for the record. Um, if during the course of the meeting become aware of an actual or apparent conflict of interest, please bring the matter to the attention of the chair. It will then be your duty to abstain from participating in discussion on the matter and from voting on the matter. Thank you. Um, given that this is a virtual meeting, we probably will have to be um, have to be, have to be um, a little bit more attentive to making sure that um, one person speaks at a time. And um, that we are um, clear um, in, in terms of audio. Um, so please speak into your um, microphone. Anyone have any questions? Certainly like to thank Rodney and Brad for all their work in setting um, this up. These are very interesting times, um, but we are thankful that um, we do have two folks who are able to um, work with the technology so that we can have this virtual meeting. And greetings to everyone who's observing. Uh, we welcome you to the board meeting. Uh, so um, if you have reviewed your agenda, then I'll entertain a motion. Um, you should see it on your screen and, and have your printed copies to approve the um, agenda for this evening. So moved. Second. Okay. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion passed. I might need you, Ronnie, to up the scroll up or scroll down rather so I can see the. Um, I believe we will attempt to have public comments through the chat form, Ravi, if I'm correct. If anybody wants to make it, uh, some public comments, the thing to do would be just to raise their hand in the WebEx session, and then um, I can take a note of that and we can circle back in a few minutes. Okay. All right, so then in the meantime, we'll um, do the approval of our January, both our January and February board minutes. They should be on your screen and uh, you've received them beforehand. I entertain a motion if um, we're ready to proceed. So this is Robbie. I move that the uh, we accept the January board minutes as uh, presented. Second. January and February or? Oh yeah, it is January and February, isn't it? Yep. January and February board minutes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second from Paul Worley. Paul Worley seconding. Um, any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the minutes um, from the January and February <laughs> board meeting have been approved. Um, I don't know if we have a a written report from our uh, booster club. Being none, um, I don't know if Tilly was able to join us from the SGA or presented a written report. No. Okay, Mr. Batterton. Okay. Uh, first of all, I, I wanted to bring the board up to date with the coronavirus uh, transition that we've had to go through. Uh, it's been uh, kind of amazing uh, and eye-opening experience for all of us, uh, particularly here <coughs> at 
from my perspective, being a, a technology challenge uh, to, to go through this. But I, I can say through the administrative team of uh, Nikki and Amanda Schwarzlander, Brad, Amanda Heifel, Dustin, and Josh, uh, we, uh, we switched from classes in front of us to classes online very quickly and uh, with uh, very few bumps. There, of course, there were some, but uh, uh, very few bumps. And uh, so I, I really do need to send out a, a shout out, thank you to that administrative team. They worked uh, long hours and did a lot of really good thinking in that process. So I wanna send a shout out to them uh, for doing that. They identified the challenges and quickly developed solutions to get those done. And uh, I think put New Charter School in the forefront of, of what's happening in, in uh, North Carolina uh, right now. Um, our core teachers prepared lessons uh, and with the help of the administrators uh, on Canvas for grades five through 12, I think that's right. Uh, Google Classroom uh, in uh, grades three, four, three, four and five. Two, yeah, two, three, two, two, three, three and four. And then learning packets for K2. Uh, so make sure that all of our children are taken care of. Um, Right now we've identified uh, or we've verified that about 99% of our students have connectivity. Not all have connected. Uh, we, we try to get through with Brad and all the ability that he has to be able to track students and teachers and uh, the administrators being able to, to see when students access their academic work. We can confirm about 95% of our students have actually signed on and completed some work. So it's working, not complete <clears throat> perfect, but uh, it's working well. Uh, Dr. Schwarzlander uh, sent me an email uh, with all the different documents that she has to be able to uh, assess uh, or to track the activity of the students and, and uh, how, how they're working on their, their work and, and the assignments given to, to the students. So uh, that's working. Uh, we met here at the school and issued out around 70 Chromebooks to students and parents that uh, did not have that uh, at, at their home uh, so that every student has that accessibility. Uh, we had a form that was set up so that we can keep track of those Chromebooks and parents of course, understood that uh, if there's if some of them are, are damaged or anything, it's their liability. So things were taken care of uh, very well. Um, we uh, we will allow the uh, the faculty to come back on campus uh, Monday, March the 30th, to pick up any needed materials because you know we had to leave pretty quickly. So some teachers have some materials in their room that like they like to pick up. So we're gonna allow them to come back on the 30th, but we're going to set up a schedule so that only a few come at a time. Uh, teachers, just like everybody else, if two or three come, they're gonna to get together and talk and congregate. So for their protection, we're gonna set up a schedule so that only one or two are allowed in a building at a particular time. This is for their safety. Um, we, uh, uh, under the leadership of, of our academy leaders and Brad, we're looking at options for long-term delivery because it, it, it appears that this is going to be longer than we originally thought. So we're looking at that. Um, you know that the schools are closed for students until May the 15th as uh, Governor Cooper has ordered. Um, there's a request for the cancellation of end of grade and end of course test. I personally uh, kind of hate that, not for the students, but for my benefit, I wanted to see how, how much our students had grown because I think there's been some growth this year. However, News Charter School and the administration here, we are already making plans and talking about ways we can assess the students' progress for our students in May. 
because we want learning to continue until May. Uh, we're not ready to give up on this year's academic year. So uh, we're going to make sure that our students are growing. Now understand we're going to have to use some judgment, some good judgment, taking into all the circumstances that they're having to go through because some are having to deal with either though, even though they have connectivity, it may be slow. It may hamper what they're able to do. So we're going to have to use a lot of judgment, but we want to make sure that our students and our parents understand that we continue to have uh, instruction and we expect our students to, to continue uh, between now and May. Um, as I said, long-term, we are looking at ways that we can uh, provide the instruction. They're looking at new platforms. I think that's the word that they use so that the teachers can uh, video themselves and, it, and get that out to the students. So there are different things that we're exploring. Um, and that's, that's, of course, new to me. So again, we're, we're reminding students and parents of the expectations. And um, one of the things, we will honor the spring break. So we will not provide any instruction during spring break. I think they will need a break just like everybody else uh, during, during our scheduled spring break. Our counselors will be involved in distributing food to needy families on March the 30th at the school, uh, but it will be a drop off and pick up. It will not be people coming into the, to the building uh, for their own safety. Uh, other information that I wanted to share with you, our annual lottery was held on Thursday, March the 19th. Uh, virtually, as this meeting is being done, uh, Amanda Highfield, Brad Williams, Angela McFall, Rodney Dine, and myself were present to conduct the lottery. We had 518 <coughs> students apply for the lottery, along with 71 siblings and staff children. After seating all the sibling and staff children and 47 additional applicants, 471 students remain on the wait list, spanning grades K-12. At this time, News Charter School staff has attempted to contact, make contact with every family member, whether on enrolled or on waitlisted, to notify them of their placement at this time. Now I'd ask uh, Nikki if she would kind of bring us up to date with the Exceptional Children's Program. We have two, two hiring positions that we wanted to explain that to the board. Yeah, so um, spent all day, 8 to 3.30 today, doing teacher virtual teacher meetings. Uh, one, of the big, one of the big concerns that we are um, having is with our EC students and making sure that they're getting the service time that they need and deserve. Uh, the, the challenge right now is um, we do have an inclusion model, so because of confidentiality, we can't serve three kids at a time like we have been when we're doing face-to-face -face instruction. So uh, our our EC teachers are having to figure out how are we going to give one-to-one -one support to all of the students that we have. Um, and so we were fortunate to find two very strong EC teachers for the openings that we've had since October or November um, so that they can get started and help us with, with our students. So just to give you an idea of the need so that some of our, so that our EC teachers can have some relief so for example, in first block for math, we have five EC students for a total of 300 minutes. Those, two, of those, two of those kids need three times a week for 30 minutes and they can't be done at the same time. So we have to do one-on-one -on -one service to those kids. There's, there's no way that, that the three EC teachers that we have right now can, can do that. Um, so we definitely need our two new staff members and we're super excited about the quality. Um, that we're bringing into the school. Uh, just on a brief side note, um, speaking to every single teacher today, um, it was a very long day and they have worked so hard to make sure that our kids are getting what they need um, academically. And we, you know, just like, just like educators are, they're overachievers and they're super worried that they're um, not giving their kids everything that they need. And we had to do remind them over and over again that right now our kids are getting more than what anybody else in this state is getting. Um, and so 
they're doing an excellent job and um, tried to reassure them that they that they're putting too much on them, not only on themselves, which in turn is putting too much on parents, which is putting too much on kids, and it's going to be a learning process. And so we problem solved today and tried to come up with ideas about how to make this less um, burdensome, not burdensome, that's a bad right. word, right. stressful for them, because mm -hmm. it's not a burden for sure, um, for them next week. So it's, it's better outlined for not only the teachers, but the parents and the kids. So hopefully as the weeks evolve, um, that will get better and smoother moving forward. So it was a long day, but they, they, are com they are so committed to making sure our kids get what they need. And I'm so proud of them. Thank you, Nikki. Thanks. That's, that's it for me. Okay, thank you so much for the updates. Are there any questions? Um, I know that um, Ms. Uh, Hope, Mrs. Hope has processed um, one of the EC teachers. Um, I think they're all through the signature portion. Is that correct, Mr. Betterton? That's correct. Did that today. Okay, so there's really, then you'll just proceed on with the, with the hiring. That's correct. So, so um, you will have um, one teacher start in April? Yes, we have, are, we are have scheduled to start April the 20th. I think that's the date. Uh, but isn't there another one starting before that? You're hiring two that, people. I thought her date was April the 20th, but I, I'd have yes. to go back and look at the document. But aren't you hiring two people? Yes. And I okay, thought both, so, both the dates were April the 20th, but I, I can check on that. Oh, okay. No, I don't need to. I just I thought uh, one. I saw one listed that whose start date was April 13th, and so I'm imagining um, the second one that we just signed off of was starting somewhere close to that. But no, I mean whatever time, whatever day they're starting, um, okay. it, it'll be a couple of weeks. So, right. I mean, about two weeks. So, what is the plan in the meantime, given the concern? Are you just going to power through with your current model or? That, that's correct. We'll, we'll take okay. the staff that we have and continue to work, work through with the best we can. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Squibb is working with all of our EC teachers um, to make sure, and we're also working with the state. You know, of course, the state doesn't have much guidance right now because it's all new for them as well. Um, and so the state has said, you know, we need to do the best we can right now with the staff that we have. Um, and that's what our teachers are doing. So they're they're working really hard to make sure kids are getting what they need. Right. Well, I mean, I, I know we had a parent who wanted to leave um, and or is making plans to leave or what have you. And um, I've, I've tried to uh, outreach to her to say that we, you know, we're all kind of in uncharted territory and doing the best um, that we can. Um, but obviously EC presents you know, um, significant um, challenges, um, both for the teachers as well as the students and, and naturally the parents as they, you know, work to advocate for their um, students. But um, so I just, you know, want to encourage you all and the teachers, you know, we don't have to get it perfect. There's no, we just don't have to be perfect about it, but we, we do need to, um, you know, acknowledge, you know, what we can and what we cannot do and the challenge uh, that that comes with delivering instruction in this format and how the parents receive it or um, families, you know, is completely up to them. But um, I don't, you know, I, I hope we don't go into things with just, okay, you know, bye if you're un, unhappy. Um, because that that you know is is not where we need to be for any student, especially those who are the most needy. Right. Yes. And we are we're working really hard to make sure we get those needs met. And like you said, this is new for all of us. Every week is going to be a learning experience and opportunity. Um, and uh, we are definitely not we are not leaving any child behind. Um, so we're working on systems to put into place using you know, our TAs um, effectively so that they can also be of extra support to some of our students who are struggling, who 
maybe don't have an IEP or a 504, but they still need that extra support. So we're really working to maximize every single staff member to make sure kids get exactly what they need. Right. Well, um, I just think that everyone needs to be comfortable just, you know, acknowledging that this is a first go around for everyone and um, that, that that's okay to, to say that and to, for it not to be perfect and not to, you know, be completely stressed out because you don't know how to do this or the student doesn't know how to do this. Um, yeah. I think the most important thing we can do is motivate them and, and um, you know, just encourage them that they can get through this. It's going to, it might be hard, but it's not impossible. Um, and that we all, you know, work together. If students partner with their teachers and teachers partner with the parents, that we can move through it. I think that that's, um, this is incredibly difficult for students and everyone is saying that at all different levels of the, uh, you know, of higher education. It's incredibly difficult for students and so we just need to acknowledge that and make them feel like it's okay if they are struggling because, you know, we, we all are, but, um, you know, not to forget to remind them, to, you know, you'll be okay. We're in it with you kind of thing, so. Agreed. All right, anything else? Um, I know um, along those same lines that um, people might be comparing us to other schools. I had just started reading Wake County's um, uh, extended learning plan online, but of course Johnson County is doing a complete, like let's just review everything we've had so far. So um, I think people need to be prepared to, you know, discuss what the, the difference is or really just what our messaging is, is that we are trying to set them up um, for success and in introducing some new instruction um, and and uh, to put them kind of ahead, as Mr. Betterson kind of alluded to, that um, we're a little ahead and not um, just taking what, you know, some people could view as a little easier route and just doing review. Um, and so are we all still are we all still um, working off of that uh, plan, or do do we want to revisit that? I'm sorry, I didn't catch your question. I'm saying our our plan, as you outlined um, in your report, is um, is moving along with introducing new instruction where Johnson County Schools has already said that they basically will just be reviewing things. And I didn't get to that part in Wake County's extended learning plan in terms of how they were approaching it. But as people start to understand the difference in how a school is managing this, uh, uh, right now it appears that the messaging is that new that will introduce new instruction and learning. And some people may have may question that and so I just wanted to make sure that the group was um, okay with our current task going forward. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, we are, we are looking at going forward and I, I think one of the things that you have to realize, we as a charter school, we're much smaller than a large district and it's easier for us to make adjustments and changes than it is for them because they have to coordinate so many people and so many different branches and things that happen. Uh, so we're smaller, we can, we can adjust quickly. And, and that's a good example of what happened here recently. When we had an issue, uh, we got together as an administrative team. I just walked down the hall and called in the administrators and we sat down and looked at the issues and the problems that would crop up and we we did the solutions and then began to implement. So I think uh, comparing us to Wake County and Johnson County uh, is a little bit unfair because they're so much larger and takes longer to, to make adjustments and changes to their system. And so we are able to, to navigate a little faster because we have fewer people, fewer moving parts to deal with. So- Yes, I- in that. I wasn't comparing us to them. What I'm saying is the reality is when families out there start understanding the educational approach that a school is choosing, there are now two different ones and they could be, um, I'm just trying to 
figure out now that we have new information how different schools are approaching things, whether they're large or small, it's still an educational choice that they're making in terms of the delivery of, um, of education to their students. And I just want to be clear that we are still all on the same page that new charter school is pursuing the delivery of new instruction. That we're, I'm just doing a check-in that that's still what we're everybody's comfortable with. Right. This is Jane. Can can I just ask a question? I, um, Mr. Betterton, I really like that um, you're talking about how uh, quickly we can adjust and make changes. And um, to Don's point, uh, at our last meeting, um, we didn't have a lot of information, particularly about like Don was saying about Johnston County and Wake County. We also didn't know that there was a very strong possibility that we won't be having EOGs or EOCs. We also didn't know that AP tests would be shortened to 45 minutes and would only cover up to mid-March what had been taught in the seated classrooms. And um, given all of that, I and, and I appreciate and value that we as a school want to move forward with learning and not just spend the next two months reviewing. Um, I definitely support that, but I wonder if there has been any discussion or thought given to adjusting how we grade students, how we um, particularly what, how things are weighted in terms of testing quizzes versus homework is homework actually graded or do we simply give people credit for participating i um i am perhaps in an unusual situation in that my three children are in three different school systems um and so uh the other my other two one who's in college and one who's um still in high school have um their schools, while they are continuing to teach, have made adjustments along those lines to allow for the fact that this is, as Dawn said, challenging for everyone, for the teachers, for the students, for the parents and the families. And so I just wonder if we've given any thought to doing things like putting, giving a higher weight to participation, like actually being present for any kind of classwork. Have we given any thought to um, giving a higher weight to ho homework or and just literally giving people credit for doing it um, and maybe lowering the, the percentage that tests and quizzes and things like that take simply because of the challenges that are presented with this model. So just wondered what everyone's thoughts were on that. Well, Jane, uh, to, to answer to that, uh, our administrators are having PLCs uh, with the teachers that, matter of fact, they met today all day talking about those issues. Uh, and it will, as Don said, it will be a, a while as we muddle through this, figuring that out. Uh, there will be discussion with the faculty and staff uh, about those issues going forward, but I can't give you a definitive answer today or uh, maybe in, in the next uh, two or three days. But until the administrators have met with the teachers and had discussion, good, honest discussion about the, the challenges of working through online and the challenges uh, that children have to deal with because they're, they're at home and some of their connectivity may be limited and they're also having to deal with siblings in the house disrupting them. And so there are some issues there that they're going to have to deal with and, and we'll have to make those adjustments uh, and as I said earlier, we're going to have to make some good judgments mm -hmm. uh, and, and use what I call common sense uh, as we go forward. But that will become clearer as the administrators have their PLC meetings with the teachers. And I can speak to that a little bit, Jane, um, because we, we did talk a lot about, this is Nikki, sorry. Uh, we did talk a lot about that today in our PLCs now that we've been doing this for four whole days. Um, and really talking about, you know, when you think about giving a test, obviously this is online. So um, thinking about assessing proficiency in a different way than just the traditional test, right? So we're in a very unique situation where we can look at a concept and say, 
do we really need to give a quiz on this, or is there another way that a student can show proficiency to me where it doesn't have to be a test? It can be in a different way. So we're having those conversations um, because we do realize that that it is different. We have not talked about the talked about the weighted aspect of it, so we will bring that up next Tuesday. That did not come up in in conversation today, um, but we did talk a lot about assessment and how are we how are we making sure that we're um, being mindful and graceful to the kids that we know are struggling with connectivity or whose parents are working and they don't have as much time as others to do the work. We are working through some of those things as a team with our with our teachers. I, I appreciate, I'm sorry, Don. I, I really appreciate that. And I think that that's, I, I mean, I think that that's great. And I love that y'all are talking about all of that. I do think it's important too to realize that in addition to people who are having connectivity issues and in addition to people who have parents who work and siblings at home and everything, even the students who maybe look like on paper or on video or whatever that they're doing just fine. I just think we're all, you know, in uncharted waters, we're all really stressed out and and for everyone's sake students and teachers and parents and administrators, all of us, I just think um, if we can take a little bit of that stress off from, uh, by easing some of the of the concerns about testing and grading and um, making sure that they're perfect, because like Dawn said, none of us is going to be perfect through this, um, and that includes our students. So I appreciate that you guys are willing, are you already having those conversations and that you're willing to look at multiple different ways that we can work with everyone to, you know, to help make this, help students continue to learn, but not um, increase everyone's stress so much <laughs> that it almost defeats the purpose. So thank you. Right. Yep. Hi, Nikki, this is Michelle. I wanted to ask a quick question. Um, are there any um, tests or that are given to the high school students that may impact a grade where they would might get college credit for that particular course if they reach a certain grade or if they score a certain grade on a particular test? Are you talking about AP? Yes. Um, the latest that we have right now for AP classes is they'll still get the AP credit for the class. AP is working on an exam that's 45 minutes long um, that can be done at home or we can do it on site if we want to. We haven't gotten all the details on that, but AP is working on that and students will still get credit at this time for their AP classes. How the exam will look, we're not totally sure yet. Okay, thank you. Michelle, my understanding too, just to piggyback on that, is that it will only cover concepts up through mid-March, at least that's the latest information, so that it only covers content that was taught up through when th this all started happening because so many districts like Johnston County and other places are not continuing to teach, so they don't want to penalize students. So that's why the exam is so much shorter. Thank you. Uh, Nikki, if you could just when that next Tuesday meeting um, have a discussion about how how are they taking attendance and do you have something like per academy as a, as sort of a um, rule of thumb or policy um, while no one's you know kind of talking about that now the kind of um, conversation that I'm hearing from different folks is that if you know DPI that might be one of the things years or a year later that they want you to start justifying how you did attend it. Yeah, no, we've, we've already talked about that several times and what we've communicated to our teachers and to our families at this point, um, unless we get different direction from DPI is, you know, if, if you complete the assignments that you've been expected to complete um, for the week, you are considered in attendance for the week. Um, now, we may have to go backtrack and put that in power school. We're not putting that in power school at this time until we get better direction from DPI. Um, but we are communicating that, you know what, guys, you know, we're not asking you to do a little bit every day. If you do all of your math on Monday for the whole entire week, you are considered present for math for the whole entire week. Um, and so that's that's kind of our what we're doing right now. And if if they have some late work, as long as it's communicated with the teacher, uh, late work is going to be okay, um, and they still will be counted present for that for the week. That's how we're doing it right now. Okay, and then all so all the work is 
is submitted or is it just work they can do at home, which <clears throat> like they do their homework at home? Well, does everything have so, to be submitted? Not to necessarily. Be Okay. Not necessarily, everybody's doing it, um, everything is a little bit different. So there, there's usually an assignment that has to be turned in. Of course, again, we're talking about four days right now. Um, what we have said, so for example, for high school, we're saying that for each class, students should have four hours of work a week. Now, one of those hours could be the teacher doing a live class session. Um, one of those hours could be reading a, reading a book on your own for an hour. I don't know, and it might be one assignment that you turn in. But as long as you have logged in to watch the live session, you've turned in the assignment that's due Friday at midnight or whenever the teacher has it due, um, you are considered present for the week. Okay, and so the teachers are somehow documenting this. Documenting this. Yes, yeah. and we can track, you know, student activity on Canvas um, on our on the back end. Same with Google Classroom. Um, you know, teachers are emailing kids all the time, so we have that email kind of documentation of communication with kids. Um, and so right now, I feel like we have a pretty good grasp on student participation. Um, and I think we, as of today, we have a pretty good sense of that that's a good way to do attendance at, at this time. Okay, and if I could just um, ask, is there any update on what you all are thinking for graduation, because a lot of people are already, um, so if you could just speak to what your initial thoughts are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, my seniors, we are so, we are just up in arms today talking with high school teachers today. So right now, because we are able to come back May 15th, we have no plans of changing graduation. Um, that will still be on the 18th, right? That's that Saturday. On May 18th, uh, as normal, um, we did put something out to seniors today because they are also not getting their prom on April 9th. And so maybe doing prom the night before graduation. So at this time, we have no intention of changing graduation. This is Jane again. Can I just, uh, I know you all have a ton of things going on, but I would encourage you all to at least begin to think about a plan B similar to when yeah, um, governor yeah similar to governor cooper closing schools for two weeks um just because he's closed them until may 15th does not in any way guarantee that we will be um finished by then i know that the guidance that the school of science and math received from the unc system was that they needed to close for the rest of the year um and they were not scheduled to to finish until the end of May. So I, I would encourage you all to come up with a, a plan B because I don't think we should rely on May 15th as the definitive. I, I understand that's where we stand now from the governor, but it, I, it may very well go longer than that. Well, and we do have a somewhat of a plan B plan. I don't wanna say it right now, it's pretty cool where we could still recognize our seniors and do some type of graduation ceremony in a very different way. Um, but some and of those, that's awesome. I'm, I, you know, I'm not asking you to share anything that is, a, that is because it's really cool, but I, you know, we do have a plan B. <laughs> well, and even if I know some schools are, to, are looking into at like doing graduations over the summer, June and July too. So, you know, but I'm glad to know that you guys have a plan B. That was my only concern. Thank you. Yeah. They are on the front of our mind every day. People have already canceled and are, are working, spending the time working to figure out what to execute their plan B versus hoping that they could be back. So they just kind of did a, a early call on it just so that they could put all their energy into making sure the plan B is worthy of their graduates. So um, I, I didn't, I just wanted to know what you guys were um, uh, thinking. So I would imagine, you know, by April, we would have a better sense of the direction of, of things and, um, you know, we'll probably need to make a decision at that point. For sure. Agreed. Okay. Anything else for? I had a quick question. This is Nicole Booker. Um, for the 1% um, of children who don't have connectivity and then the 5% who are not signing on, have, have we figured out an approach? I know it's so early, but any thoughts? 
Oh yeah, um, we talked about that today too. So um, teachers have been reaching out. We've told them, you know, they've been reaching out by email at this point in time. What we've um, encouraged them to start doing is picking up the phone and making some phone calls. And several teachers have done that, and you know, gotten a hold of parents to say, you know, their their kids aren't aren't doing the work that they're supposed to be doing. Um, Dr. Schwartzlander and I also have a list of kids that we've been concerned about all year long. Anyway, the ones who are um, not performing online or tend to be the ones who weren't performing in school anyway. Um, so they, Dr. Schwartzlander and I have a list of kids that we will be calling this week as well to check in. Um, we've also, we're gonna talk about a plan where some of our TAs could perhaps have a group of four or five kids that they are in charge of, so to speak, so that on a daily, weekly basis, they are reaching out to some of our kids who are struggling to get the work done for whatever reason. So they have a, another adult um, helping them with that, with that challenge. And so right now, I think the personal aspect of learning is, is what's throwing us all off a little bit. And I think, um, you know, we do have plans to pick up that telephone and call these kiddos that, that are not doing the work and just, tr just so we can figure out why. Um, if there's a reason why that we need to know about that we can support them with, we will absolutely do that. I know one student right now that I need to call tomorrow, um, there's a particular situation with him and I'm not even sure that he has a phone or internet or anything. And so I'm gonna reach out to him tomorrow and if that's the case, I'm gonna figure out a way to get him a phone and internet access or whatever I need to do to help him be successful. So we, talk, we talked about that a lot today. Okay, thank you so much for all the updates and we appreciate the teachers and all of the work that they're um, doing. Um, and uh, I'm glad you're encouraging them not to be so super. Um, hard on themselves or stressed out. Um, I mean, I think everyone um, is working um, as hard as they can to make sure that we're getting uh, the information out to our students. Um, Rodney, did we want to circle back to any public comment? Did you have anything that we needed to hear? Nobody, nobody has seen me a note. Okay, so uh, we'll move to executive committee report um, and um, executive committee help me you all because I don't remember if we, we didn't meet, but we um, did discuss basically and we'll present in closed session um, working on the documents for our um, superintendent candidate and we'll give you an update on that. Any, anyone want to add anything to that? Okay, and then um, academic affairs have not met um, so we have no report to submit. I don't have my agenda up, Rodney, but um, finance. Yes, yeah, so I can share. Okay, thank you. So on the finance meeting, we did meet. Um, I'll actually pull up the um, updated budget. So this will be the updated budget as of February 29th. The finance committee did go through um, the various line item changes um, that for this budget. Um, if you'll see at the bottom, basically what it boils down to is after we adjusted for all of the changes in personnel and staffing and expense forecasting, um, we're currently showing a projected budget with a surplus of a, a little over 118,000 um, for the end of the year. Um, a good bit of that's coming from some of the staffing vacancies that we've had. Um, so we're, we're feeling we're in good shape there um, for now to the rest of the year. So we just need to have a motion and approve this as the um, budget we'll use from now to the end of the year for tracking. Thank you. Need a motion to accept. Um, I, just a quick question. Um, February meeting, did we not approve January, I'm, I'm sorry, I haven't looked at it in just a little bit. Did we hold off on approving January's? Did we need to approve that as well? No, we don't We don't have to go back and approve it. What it's saying is basically mm -hmm. when we approve each month, it's on record for what we've done up to that date. So this would be inclusive of when we went back and approved the one in December. The last one that we approved was December. I'm gonna make a motion to approve. 
Second. Ms. Robbie. Thank you. Any additional questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, all in favor? Oh. Aye. Go ahead. Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, motion passed. Thank you. Um, one other item that I wanted to bring up, Dawn, and I apologize we didn't actually cover this uh, in the finance meeting. It, it really it doesn't have any budget implications, but um, so we actually had a we had originally approved our audit with the uh, Reeves and Associates. Um, and so under Reeves, there were a couple of different divisions. There was a general accounting division and then there was a division that um, pretty much focused on charter school audits, et cetera. And so um, there were some events that, that, that went on and Jay and a couple of the, the people there um, spun out to a different um, LLC um, accounting firm and right. so as a part of that spin out, that was the charter school um, audit side. But if you remember when we had met before when Jay came and presented to us, we went ahead and basically approved, we never got to the point of signing the contract that, that I recall, but we actually approved using Reason Associates at the time to do our audit for one more year. Right. And then we said at the end of that year, we would go through you know, a whole other set of RFP mm -hmm. process. And it's timing because they're going ahead and starting to collect the collateral. Well, um, Jay and a few of the guys, they spun out to a different uh, set of, uh, a different company. And so we've got a set of materials for the actual contract. It's the same terms, the same pricing. It's the same people doing it. Um, the only thing that's changed is they're just under a different um, company name now. Um, so I just wanted to run that by the board and see if everybody was okay with just going ahead and signing a contract. I mean, it's the, it's the same terms that we've used before. I mean, it's just under a different um, uh, LLC, if you will. And I've, I've, he sent all the materials, you know, supporting the contract, the welcome letter, the, the standard materials, which is what we would have had to sign before. We just never got to that stage before they, they did the spin out. So I, I just need to okay. see what's the pleasure of the board in regards to that. So basically it's just a title a name change. That's all it is. For the contract. Uh, did you, who were the individuals who were who were now? Is it is it still Reason Associates? And I was just curious as to know what who of those folks are still associated. Uh, so Jay um, Jay is the one that had been doing our audit that was always leading it. Um, he is one of the members that went over to, um, they call it Sharp Patel PLLC. I've got the welcome letter up in front of us. Um, if that's what you're asking. Okay. So is, is Leon Reeves no longer associated with Jay? Um, correct. That's correct. Yeah. Or the other way around, Jay's no longer associated with Reeves. Right. Yeah, yep. that's, that's my concern. Correct. So basically, okay. Jay, Jay left Reeves and took the contract with him. Jay left Reeves, and my recommendation is that we sign our contract with the new firm. Okay. So did so was he in a position? I guess he's in a position to take the contract with him. I just don't want to be in a position okay. where we never the contract. there was no contract. Okay. We never actually signed the contract. Right. Okay. And we don't get into any kind of thing with procurement with them changing, do we? No. We were outside of the contract. The contract had expired. We already mm -hmm. met the agreements of those, met the terms of that agreement. Because that was it was a two-year one originally. We fulfilled right. two years. But we had selected when we did our selection of the firm. Did we sole source it, or did we open it up for some bids? No, we didn't open it. Okay, it was just a, we just did a one-year extension. Okay, so we got a one-year extension of, of a contract, and we're contracting with a different firm. The individual left the firm, but the firm we were contracting with, does that still exist? Hmm. Um, as of now, they do. Okay. Well, what I think Paul is saying, and I'm kind of following um, his line of thinking is could they say that our with the board had already voted 
because we did at the last meeting for the other still existing firms. We, we voted yeah. to uh, to extend the contract. We never signed a contract to extend it. So technically, I would say we have to make a motion to, to execute it. to rescind that. We never executed on it. We right. make a motion to rescind it, and then uh, make a new motion to. Um, uh, use this one for the one-year extension. Okay, so I, I, I would say that if we've got, if we did an extension, we did an extension with an existing firm, that's an extension. If a person leaves the firm and we've got a contract with them, then it's a new contract, it's not an extension. Unless there's some threat of ownership or or, or legalities that run with that, you know, it, and one could say you know, that, that we, we, have to, we have to we have to we have to do a motion to rescind our extension, and then we need a motion to accept this new contract with the new company. Exactly. Is that what? Right. Yeah. Okay. If and and that is if we can do it sole source without a procurement process. Um, was there an agreement well, between the first contract company well, and this particular one? Was there agreement between Jay and the original company that Jay would take a certain number of contracts or clients with him? Right. Well, do we do we have parameters for having to do a bid? I mean, is it a certain amount of money that requires us to do a bid? Have we ever, is that policy? No, we, we've, always, we've always thought about it. We're, we're not required by law to do any form of RFP on any contract. We do it as a kind of a best practices when it's a significant okay. size, you know, or, you know, exposure type thing. Um, one okay. of the things we just got to be mindful of here is um, it's a timing thing because we're getting close to the end of the year and they're already starting to gather materials. Um, to do that. So I tell you, why don't we just do this? Let's just, I just want to make you aware of it. We don't have to vote on it tonight. Um, let, let's just, I'll take it back to the no, finance exactly. committee. It, are, are, are we interested in, in pursuing a vote? I mean, there's no need to put it off if there's no reason to put it off. Or, do, or does, does the board feel like they would rather table it? My, my interest is moving on with it. If this is, if we're within our, our, um, legalities, which I'm, that's what I'm understanding that we are technically because we don't have to go to bid, but at the same time, we've got, you know, we're dealing with public money and, and the, the, the appearance yeah, let's, here. Don, let's just, let's just table it. Let's just table it for right now. There's some other stuff I want to look at just to make sure we're, we're good with them splitting off and, and uh, the steps we got to before. So let's just table it for now. I wanted to make you aware of it, but um, if we need to make some, you know, recommendations for the next board meeting, we'll call an exact meeting, but um, we'll, we'll verify the timing of that. I'm good with Jay, just so you know. I'm good with it. I just want to make sure we don't get trouble. I, I would say that maybe for, to help us with clarity um, on some of these contracts, because um, I was going to ask you to just give an update that the HR contract that we approved at the last, um, at the special board meeting was a, was approved through finance for the amount um, and that that was not a bid. So we need some kind of framework in terms of when this board feels like it should do a bid and when it doesn't have to. I agree. That's something we can but take. I, cause, yeah, because I think that contract was more than this contract and that was not a bid mm -hmm. the first or second time. Mm -hmm. Can't hear you. Uh, so we'll just yeah we'll go table that one for now. So. Okay. Can you can you just tell the board that that um, the HR contract was also um, uh, went through finances was and was fine with the amount. That, that's right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, resource or or facilities. Robbie, does he have so, anything under finance? So we, uh, this is Robbie. So we can we can just go through facility. Just a quick thing. Uh, Mr. Betterton was presented, uh, and myself and Benji, a list from Josh at just um, maintenance, um, taking care of stuff over the summer activities um, that he has given us that says needs to be done. So he's got a needs, and then he's got a, a want list. 
I think the total list comes up to somewhere we I shared with Benji around forty six thousand dollars. The need list was around thirty. Um, so we're looking at how we can go ahead and get some of these things done, possibly, um, and not wait for the summer. So that's the big thing on our list. The other thing is the modulars. We'll have to re-sign uh, what we're working on. Mr. Betterton is going to work with uh, Dave on signing a one-year uh, extension to that uh, those modular leases for now, just based on capacity, current classrooms needed, and that type of thing. Uh, so we'll be working on that over the next month to try to get that settled down. Uh, it is due in July. Okay. Okay. So is that thirty thousand in need? Forty six in want. So forty six total. Oh, forty six total. Okay. Yeah. 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 So sixteen in want. So because he needs to go ahead, we need to kind of what probably by next meeting go ahead and figure out whether we want to prove that so he can start teeing up to work for the summer. Yep. Okay. So or even sooner. Work now. Sooner will yeah. be nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sooner is it. Nobody's here. Yep. yep. Some okay. of these inspections and such can be done. Yeah, and with an updated budget. School. We, yeah, with an updated budget, we, sh we can look at that now with this month and figure out when we squeeze that in. Yep. And, yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, resource. It's in his budget. Yep. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, no report for this month working on the statements okay. for the. Um, Bylaws. Okay. Board development. I can't hear you. You're muted, Michelle. There we go. No report for this month. Okay. Thank you. Strategic planning. Um, also, uh, we did we did not meet. Um, we are we have had to change our standing meeting time. Um, now, I guess it probably wouldn't matter, but we had to change it because it interfered. Um, the tutoring schedule interfered. So that's why we didn't meet this past um, month. Uh, and so I guess we'll be looking at meeting virtually moving forward. Okay, thank you. Um, old business, general records retention schedule. That says me, but I don't. Who will put that on the agenda? Okay, so we'll table that until we have more information on, um, I think that's kind of talking, we had a discussion about the digital um, repository of documents and so forth, or general records. When yeah. that general records retention, is that when things should be um, uh, purged? Don, this is the agenda. So, um, um, Amanda Highfield asked me to put that on the agenda, but I'm not sure why. <laughs> Let me, can I jump in real quick? Can I jump in real quick? This is Brad. Um, Brad. Basically, the, um, the state has adopted a new records retention schedule, and we just have to sign off that we are, we are adopting that in line with the state. So it's just the updated records retention that you guys need to approve that we are adopting the state's updated record retention. That in our pack, the actual. I don't know. I'm playing the message from Ms. Heifel right now. Okay. <laughs> they need to provide us a copy of that. that okay, no, it has not been included in the packet, so we will get that to you as soon as possible. Okay, thank you. All right, she will be sending a copy later. Sorry to interrupt. No problem. Is there any new business we need to discuss before closed session? Okie dokie. I'll entertain a motion to go into closed session, unless there's something else right now. Okay. Make a motion to go into closed session for personnel and administrative discussion. Second. All right. Second by Robbie. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, so right. give me give, give me one second, Don. So for those that are on the open session, um, if you just want to hang on, we'll we will come back to this meeting once we uh, can you know finish up our closed session, and we'll join back in here to finish up the meeting. Um, don't know exactly how long it'll be, but do want you to know you're welcome to uh, stay here while we go conduct that, and we'll come back. So, Thank give you. Me one second. Give me one second, Rodney. Rodney, we're supposed to.
Yeah, so everybody near the log off in your email should be a separate um, WebEx meeting for the issue was titled uh, NCS board closed session. Um, so you need to log off from this meeting and join the other one. Log off on this meeting, okay. Okay, go ahead, Dom. Okay. Um, we are back in open session, and um, I will entertain um, motion for our action item. I make a motion we accept the board's recommendation regarding uh, the superintendent position. Second. Second. Okay, we have a second. Are there, is there any final discussion? Okay. All in favor. Um opposed. Motion is passed. Yay. Yay. Okay. And our um second action item. I'd like to make a motion that we approve option one of the contract for up level HR solutions. Second. Any final discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion is passed as well. <laughs> okay, so thank you again. Grant Rawls was homeless, and so we appreciate your direction working out all the um, uh, glitches beforehand, so this was um, pretty easy. We might have to do it for April, um, and so it was it was a good run at it. Thank you again. Any comments in front of Everyone good? I make a motion we adjourn. Second. Second. Mm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much, everybody. <laughs> Thank you all. Bye bye. I thank Rodney for setting up the. Still hanging in there. Yeah. Thank you.